Our next speaker is Melissa Render. She is VP of Exploration with Newfound Gold Corporation. Uh, Melissa is an exploration geologist with 15 years experience focused on orogenic gold. And during this time, she's managed exploration projects worldwide from grassroots to advanced stages in greenstone belts. And that includes uh, the Abitibi, Eastern Goldfields, Hope Bay, Central Lapland, and Benfora. She also spent three years as a consultant, specializing in target generation, 3D modeling, data management, and program design. Um, and Melissa, if you remember, a, a couple years ago was here presenting preliminary findings on Queensway. Uh, and we would really like to welcome her back now to provide an update on their progress. Welcome. Okay, thank you for the introduction and thanks for inviting me back once again to present. I'm delighted to be here um, to provide you with an overview and an update on our Queensway project located in central Newfoundland. Our disclaimer, if you'd like to read this in more detail, I invite you to visit our website uh, and there you can also find a lot more information about our project. The Queensway project is located in central uh, Newfoundland, about 15 kilometers west of the town of Gander. Uh, this is a sizable land package. It's over 120 kilometers in strike length. And this, uh, this package was strategically consolidated around two regional scale fault zones, uh, the Appleton fault zone in the west and the JBP fault zone in the east. These are believed to be crustal scale structures, uh, the conduits for the gold bearing fluids. And as you can see in the property map there, um, those are uh, gold and rock samples. And you can see the spatial association between those two regional trends uh, and the gold mineralization found to date. So this is a district scale uh, project. Uh, majority of the exploration work has been focused to date on the Appleton Fault Zone at Queensway North. Um, the segment there where you can see uh, Iceberg, Keats, Keats West, Golden Joint, and Lotto uh, labeled. Uh, we're in the midst of a 650,000 meter drill program. And in 2023, we completed 195,000 meters, uh, much of which went into that segment of the Appleton Fault Zone. Uh, but used very well, and I will discuss later in the presentation uh, what came from a lot of that work. Um, the project is divided into two uh, property blocks, so Queensway North, um, divided by Gander Lake, which you can see there. Again, uh, Queensway North being a bit more advanced in exploration, and then our Queensway South project, a more Greenfields um, regional play, where we are um, getting more and more active each year. Uh, I can't speak enough about how wonderful it is to work in Newfoundland. Um, everything from access, I mean, I've worked on projects around the world and the logistics here are phenomenal. Uh, the project, you can see where the Trans-Canada Highway cuts right through the northern portions of the project. And then our access to Gander, wonderful workforce. Um, and I think one of the reasons why um, the Fraser Institute ranked uh, Newfoundland uh, number four in the world uh, last year. So zooming in now to that, uh, that segment of the Appleton, this is quite zoomed in. It's about a 2.5 kilometer strike uh, where some of our key zones are focused. I mean, if we were to zoom out, it's of uh, the bigger picture, it's about seven kilometers through here where we've been adding additional new discoveries such as K2, jackpot, honeypot you may have heard of. But um, here, this is a particular uh, corridor of interest, um, just to get your eyes into the map here. Um, that gray polygon that strikes off to the northeast, um, that is the Appleton Fault Zone. Uh, the red polygon surrounding it are the gold-bearing uh, faults with their associated um, uh, vein constituents. And you can see it really form this, this network of mineralization that's sitting around the Appleton. The Appleton fault is not, um, doesn't tend to host mineralization itself, but really the gold is in this extensive damage zone uh, surrounding that fault. Uh, the host stratigraphy are Ordovician turbidites. Um, on the east side, you can see <clears throat> we've got the gray wacky 
interbedded with gray um, siltstones, <coughs> excuse me, and on the west side, um, in the hanging wall to the Appleton are these black siltstones. And the Appleton really forms a, a break, a major, uh, at a major domain boundary between these two lithologically distinct um, domains of rock. Uh, that east-northeast striking gray polygon, uh, that's the Keats Baseline Fault. And this is a very prominent uh, gold-bearing structure that you can see most of our zones are discordant to the stratigraphy. They cut across. And that is the host for the Keats uh, main mineralization. And more recently, our new discoveries, Iceberg and Iceberg East, which I'll talk about in more detail. Um, in addition, stepping across into the hanging wall, we are making new discoveries such as Keats West, K2, and Keats West is one that I'm gonna, gonna focus on in this presentation as well. We there have a list of our top um, 11 significant intervals of all time drilled on it, and you can see this is very high grade gold um, over some pretty substantial intervals, and not just coming from one zone, but coming from a number of zones along this uh, segment of the fault. Um, this is uh, just a, um, a project uh, timeline to show how quickly we've advanced this project. I'm not going to spend a ton of time, but really this was consolidated in 2016 and 2017 through a number of transactions. And from there you can see how rapidly we've added uh, these new zones up until where we are today. <clears throat> Uh, I've included this slide to sh really show that we're getting more active regionally. Uh, although we've been very uh, focused in the Davidsville sedimentary sequence at Queensway North there, this project does cover a wide variety of geologic environments that are conducive to gold mineralization and have existing showings where we're very active advancing new um, target areas. Um, again, where we are on along the Appleton, that is interpreted to be orogenic, uh, epizonal style mineralization. Uh, but we've, you know, we've got the grub, the grub line, which is a an ultramafic ophiolitic sweet, um, sorry, ultramafic to mafic um, sequence that you know could host greenstone. Uh, orogenic gold, um, that big pink kind of body there in the in the west. That's the Mount Peyton intrusive suite where there's known uh, epithermal style targets. So this project is an exploration geologist um, kind of playground, and that we uh, we are looking in a variety of environments. Uh, so just to look back on 2023, this was quite a, a big year for us. As I was saying, we drilled 195,000 meters, uh, 188 of which were focused on the um, Queensway North segment, and about 8,300 down in our regional um, project, Queensway South. Uh, this led to a multitude of new discoveries, including Iceberg and Iceberg East, uh, K2, um, the expansion of Keats West, uh, Jackpot, and the Paul's Pond trend, which I'll also talk about at Queensway South. Uh, here you can see where we were at at the end of December 2022 and where we were at the end of December 2023 and how rapidly we have expanded those known zones. But really focusing our exploration in the top about 250 meters vertical depth and kind of a window around the Appleton of about 300 meters or so. Um, in addition, I already touched on it a bit, but yeah, we, we went back to Keats and K2 and places like that where we really added to their, to their mineralized footprint. Uh, other major work activities include the uh, unroofing or uncovering of the, the Keats zone, the high-grade segment of the Keats baseline fault, the Keats trench, so I'll touch on that a bit. Um, we uh, finished the acquisition of our 3D seismic. I do have a slide on there that we'll talk about in a, in a bit more detail. Um, we flew a property-wide LIDAR and photogrammetry survey to really help with the structural interpretation of the project and understanding um, the, um, the surficial environment, uh, which then landed into a, a geomorphology study really focusing at Queensway North. So that, because we were quite active, uh, soil sampling, prospecting, trenching, uh, it's very important, obviously, to understand your overburden to help figure out where things are going to work, but also interpret the results of those types of field activities. 
So now, looking at a couple of zones, again, it was difficult to decide which ones to focus on, but Keats West is quite a you know, pivotal discovery for us, uh, namely because you can see in that 3D image there, um, Keats West is located on the west side of the Appleton Fault, where we really hadn't been very active um, because of the successes we were having on the east side. We'd actually stepped over there looking to see if some of these structures crossed uh, the Appleton, tagged into Keats West, but not one of the structures, was not continuous with one of the structures on the east side because it's in a completely different uh, structural orientation. So as you can see there in that cross section, uh, cutting through it, it is a low angle southwest dipping fault. Uh, we've interpreted it to be in a, you know, in a true thrust orientation. Uh, so it gently dips off to the southwest. Um, it is an extensive brittle fault zone. You can see in the image to the uh, bottom right of what the mineralization looks like. These are epizonal brittle faults uh, with multi-phased quartz veins with free gold where we get um, massive buggy textures, brecciated phases and stylolytic portions. Uh, the main metallic uh, mineral associations include uh, arsenopyrite, uh, borninite and boulangerite, which are lead antimony sulfa salts, chalcopyrite and lesser amounts, pyrite, and a bit of stibnite and glina, but um, those are uh, more rare, we'll say. Uh, this zone has been um, followed over 315 meters of strike and down dip of about 305 meters uh, with an average thickness of about 30 meters, but definitely a lot thicker in places. Uh, so that shallow dipping nature, and then you can also see a late cross-cutting fault there that actually popped up a part of it closer to surface. This was a really nice discovery for us in that we were able to you know, rapidly expand on it with very shallow drilling. So stepping across the fault now um, to Iceberg, you may have heard of, uh, if you're following some of our news, as a new discovery made in um, early last year. And I should say Keats West came online at the end of 2022, so very recently. Um, this uh, discovery was also quite significant for us because we had been following the Keats Baseline Fault, which is that east-northeast uh, southeast dipping structure that hosts the Keats main zone. Um, as we were stepping along strike, we kind of lost it. Um, so we are seeing that there's more um, post-mineral faulting that's kind of chopped things up. Uh, and this is a case too where we think the baseline has actually been offset. So we were quite aggressively exploring along strike where we then tagged into iceberg. And you know, after figuring it out, it has very similar characteristics and orientation and whatnot. Um, to uh, Keats. Again, though, you can see the style of mineralization. We don't see big changes in the style of mineralization. This is very typical of what all the mineralization looks like along this segment of the Appleton uh, fault zone. So we've got Iceberg now and Iceberg East combined a mineralized strike length of about 570 meters. And then when combined with Keats, uh, the mineralized footprint of the Keats Baseline Fault Zone is about 1.9 kilometers. Again, with most of the exploration being focused in that top 200 meters vertical depth or so. And then as we, and the deepest drilling, really a long strike to the southwest, in the Keats Baseline Fault, so closer to where the baseline would hit uh, the Appleton, we've put in a few holes down around 400 meters. Uh, this is quite a nice um, cross section here that you can see coming across in the image above for reference. And the, you know, the north uh, northwest moderately dipping Appleton Fault Zone, and then the very different structural orientations of those zones. So the, you know, the low angle nature of Keats West and the more steeply dipping orientations of iceberg. Um, so we are dealing with a variety of vein orientations here and a big um, control on mineralization are the intersections of these varying uh, fault and vein orientations. So. Um, it's, uh, it's very important to understand that, know where you get those intersections and, and those will control the geometries of your, your high grade domains. Uh, Keats Trench, so this was very exciting for us. Uh, we were all very um, keen to do this project, a big one, um, but we uncovered uh, the 
uh, the high gra this high grade segment of the Keats baseline fault. Uh, up until now, the Keats zone uh, has never been viewed in its entirety, only in uh, drill core. So you can imagine for a lot of people who have been involved in this project for a while, this was quite an exciting moment um, to uncover it. Uh, it was no small trench. It was over 200 meters long and about 70 meters wide. And there's about eight meters or so of overburden over top of uh, the Keats zone. Uh, in addition to curiosity, we did this really because we were hoping to, uh, well, we've been completing a detailed mapping project of it, validate our geologic model, and now come spring, uh, we'll move into a detailed sampling program. Um, and I think that's gonna shed a lot of light on the mineralization controls at Keats, but also understanding more about how the Keats zone formed itself. <clears throat> Some of you are quite curious about the seismic program. We're very curious as well. Uh, we've, um, you can see in the top right uh, map there, that's the acquisition map. So we ran um, a 3D seismic program with uh, high size who are here at the conference today. Uh, so if you have any technical questions, they're the best ones to ask, because many of us uh, you know, hard rock geologists don't have a lot of experience, and particularly in exploration with seismic data, so we're all in this learning journey right now. But we completed the survey um, with the intent to image um, the rocks below and at depth to really help our, and guide our next phases of exploration to depth. So taking exploration below that 250 meters vertical and having a data set that will identify and highlight um, those structures of interest and give us um, um, a, you know, a robust data set to help with targeting. Uh, so it covers the, the Appleton um, north segment, uh, but we also have 2D section lines that we've run across out to the JBP fault and even further across regional structures such as the, the Grub line in the east and the Dog Bay line. So this is going to really be a fascinating data set uh, regionally to, to image the greater um, geologic uh, and structural architecture of the area, but then specifically focused on the Appleton to help us uh, see at depth. So we're just headed into um, the processing phase is just completing, and we're about to get those, uh, those data sets. Um, this, these are preliminary images um, as we're just transitioning now into that interpretation phase and targeting phase. So this is the, the fun bit that we've all been, been waiting for. Um, so that we are hopeful that in the coming months we'll be transitioning to some deeper drilling using this seismic data set to drive, uh, to drive those programs. So jumping regionally, so more into our kind of greenfields exploration, uh, you can see in that inset map uh, the, the Queensway South project in that blue box that's highlighting the Paul's Pond area. This is about uh, 55 kilometers south, a long strike of, on the Appleton um, at our Queensway South project. Uh, the image there in the geology, just to get your eyes into it, so the gray being those Davidsville um, interbedded siltstones, gray wackies, the dark gray, that black, you know, that black siltstone unit that sits in the hanging wall um, to the Appleton. Uh, because of our, you know, our work done in the north, um, I think we have, you know, it's, we've taken what we've learned there and over our work through the past years, we're really starting to put a framework together and understand where we are. And you can see the spattering of gold, that's gold in soils and in grabs, um, you know, mapping out that the, the Appleton fault zone. So we were drawn to the Paul's Pond area originally uh, through our prospecting, soil sampling, till sampling efforts because there was a lot of gold in the surficial environment through there. And this is where we um, completed our first uh, drill program um, in 2022, uh, which was 7,200 meters. Uh, this was highly successful in that we hit um, significant gold mineralization in 27 out of 33 uh, drill holes, uh, VG and 10, uh, 10 holes over four target areas, and kind of define this two and a half kilometer long uh, strike uh, around Paul's Pond. But we're seeing mineralization in a variety of different environments. It is different than Queensway North. I will point out this green unit, which is new, and we don't get that at Queensway North. It's a 
we call it a mafix siltstone. It's very chlorit chloritic and it is injected by a number of diuretic to gabbroic uh, cells and dikes and it tends to host the mineralization in around pols. And you can see some of the images there. Um, it seems that we're maybe even at a, in a, def a deeper um, uh, location in the crust where the mineralization has formed. We're getting very coarse um, galena and our, the arsenopyrite is, can be quite massive to, you know, these fine needles. Um, and we get pyrotite and some things like tourmaline and biotite. Uh, so mineral associations that, and carrot, I guess the crystal habits of the mineralization being very different, uh, a lot more sheer fabrics. And um, um, we have just now, in 2023, uh, finished up our follow-up drill program to that. We're waiting on those results, but we completed 8,300 meters and 37 holes. And again, we're very aggressive on the boots and the, on the ground activities uh, through here. So we're anxiously waiting for those results, um, but we've already you know, kick-started our 2024 drilling program down there, uh, continuing to turn through a number of drill targets that we, we have lined up from previous exploration activities. Okay, so to wrap things up here, uh, just an outlook of what this year is going to look like. We're already, uh, we're already right into it here. Um, I guess one of the, the benefits of working in Newfoundland is that we are able to explore all year round. Um, we've got uh, about 100,000 meters plus of drilling planned uh, property wide, um, about um, 90 to 100,000 dedicated to uh, Queensway North and approximately 20,000 at uh, regional. But again, we're, we're very fluid in our planning and it's very results driven. So depending on how things are going, we, we tend to um, you know, move meters around as, as required. At Queensway North, we will be focused again on expanding those near surface um, discoveries, but then moving into deeper drilling with that seismic data uh, in hand to really see what's going on down there. So an exciting year for us uh, to, make that, uh, to make that transition. Um, in addition to being still very aggressive in our, in our greenfields exploration, we've got a drill going there uh, currently, moving through a number of targets that we've got lined up from previous field programs, and then continuing to expand our soil grids, prospect out into new areas, continue with the trenching to build that healthy, um, robust target uh, pipeline that we'll keep working through. We don't have a lot for geophysics plan. We are doing um, uh, drone uh, magnetic surveys down through Queensway South because we actually do have uh, magnetic signatures there in those uh, mafic intrusive. So uh, we don't have a lot of products that work well in you know these sedimentary sequences, but we are doing that um, and potentially expanding our geomorphology study down through uh, Queensway South. Um, but apart from that, we've got some big, big data sets that we've collected in 2023, and we'll be really focused on working with those, interpreting those, and using it to, uh, uh, to, to guide our target generation. Um, and that's all I have. Um, so happy to answer any questions. Um, we don't have a booth, unfortunately, but I am kicking around the conference. If you feel free to approach me if you want to have a chat. Otherwise, I, um, I encourage you to reach out by email or visit our website. Thank you. Thank you.